once again. We exalt and honor you for the privilege to stand once again in your presence as we look into this leadership program. Father, help us not to be overdone of our own thoughts, but to be the hearer of your word and the doer. Teach us what you want us to say. With the guide of the Holy Spirit, put your word in our mouths. Let us not speak from self. That in everything, only your name alone will be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Brethren, good morning once again. You are welcome to this Open Heart Fellowship. This is an opportunity for us to know more about our leadership quality as a believer. Christians are expected to work closely with God and to learn from His paths how they ought to conduct themselves in times of difficulties. Christians who work with God, they don't shy away from victory. They are bound to win even when everyone thinks the journey is impossible. Christians who survive are Christians who understand their fellowship with God, how they're supposed to conduct themselves in difficult times. Today's topic is hearing from God. How do we hear from God? What are the basic characteristics of hearing the word of God? A lot of Christians has come to us with questions on daily basis. Can we actually hear God speak to us? Is it efficient, something that only happened in the Bible days? Can God indeed speak to man? Can his word be audible? Can we at least hear him in our ear when he speaks? Are we expected to understand his word like a human language? Is his word only pierce the heart like as it does in the scriptures? All these questions will be answered in this teaching. But the basis of the understanding is God's word are not empty voice. They are not meant for you to hear for hearing's sake. God's word is meant to reform a believer, to transform his life, to bring God-like character out of him. And we can give you instances from the scriptures. Like when God led Ezekiah to the valley of dry bones. God already understands what he wants to do concerning the dry bones. But he had to shape a man to think like him. And when he brought in the prophet into the valley of dry bones, he asked a simple question. Son of man, can this bone live? And that is the question God is asking you today. Can this your dead situation come back to life? Can things that are humanly impossible, situations that are written off, that can they be a result? Your answer will be determine what you hear from God and how you have a close walk with God. If your answer is this bone are too dry, or your answer is that the grave are already dried and covered, the possibility of the bones rising again is not there. That means you just lost the point. By the time you try to measure God with human knowledge or put him inside a test tube to fine tune the desire and knowledge of God of an important nature in your heart, you may never be able to understand him. But God has a unique path for us. His teachings are without repentance. Christians must understand that God
has its plan. Not our ways, nor our thoughts. And his way is far higher than what we can think, act, or do. And when we understand these facts, we begin to understand some basic facts. And this fact leads us to a path in Christianity where God's power and dominance prevail. So, as believers, let's understand the path that God has chosen for us. In Hebrew, in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 5 to 6, it said, Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your way, acknowledge him, who God, and he will make your path straight. And in King James Version, he said, He will guide your path. First, trust in the Lord. Hearing from God comes from the basic foundation of absolute trust in God. There is no way you can hear from God if you don't believe that He is God. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. He is not the God trying to prove himself to you or trying to be noticed or trying to prove his power so that you know who he is. He has already done that in the creation. So you must first of all believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him if you must come to his presence. And you must have full trust, absolute confidence in him. You must trust him enough to be able to gamble with your life in his hand. If you cannot trust God enough to give your heart, your mind, your body, your life into his hand, forget about hearing from him. You will never hear a word. You must trust him absolutely to relax in his hand. That when you kneel in prayer, you are not talking as a man to a God. You are talking as a friend, speaking with a friend. That is the level of trust and commitment that makes you hear from God. You may learn not on your own understanding. Yes, a lot of us have gone to school. We are very intelligent. We study science. We study physics. We study mathematics. We study geography. We study literature. All these are useless when it comes to hearing directly from God. Because the Bible said, in all your way, what should you do? Acknowledge that he is God. And what happened? How do you acknowledge that he is God, make him the driver of your car or make him the driver of your destiny. If he is the driver of your destiny, he will be in control of your life. He will speak to you when he need to. He will show you revelation when he need to. You don't have to come into his presence with permissive will. You don't have to go and fast and pray and force him to speak. He will speak in his own time. Because the Bible did not say when you force God to speak, he makes everything beautiful. The Bible said he makes everything beautiful in his time. Not your time. His own time. And he will make your path straight. That is the key. The purpose of this world is to straighten your path so that you do not go astray. You can walk with God for 10 years 
and God may not see the need to speak to you. You can walk with God for 15 years and God may not see the need to speak to you. But be rest assured, the day your feet stray from the path, He's going to bring it back. And He's going to correct you. And that is what is unique about God. He is not a man. He is not a talkative. That's why the Bible says, Once have God spoken, but I heard him many times. That power belongs to him. He spoke once, but how many times did I hear? Many times. God only speaks once. People can hear him as often as they want to hear him. But the actual fact is that the power to do the impossible belongs to God. Many people foolishly turn to spiritism for guidance, hoping to hear from God. Spiritism is not God's knowledge. And in fact, God considers it as an offense against him. Because turning to the spirit or to the spirit of the dead, to witchcraft, to manipulate his spirit, to connive into the future, they will only tell you truths that are lies. Truths that cannot stand the test of time. That can be changed with time. That when God speaks, his word sticks. And God will not give you a word that is of private interpretation. That's how you know the difference between the word of God and the words of spiritism. God's words are interpreted based on circumstances. For example, God tells you, tomorrow put your life in order, you shall surely die. God will not tell you that except he has a good reason for it. And he must tell you the reason. Even when God said to Nebuchadnezzar, that a spirit was taken from him, he was made to eat grass like an ox in his dream. He revealed the mystery to Daniel why his situation would be like that. That there is also a way to escape that situation. And that way is by breaking away from sin and practicing righteousness. So you see, in God's calendar, there is no definite question and definite answer. In Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20, but no one is better at guiding his people than God. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 3 to 5, we already read in the memory verse. And Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2, Psalm 25, 9, 32, 8 to 9. Verse 8 to 9, 37, verse 23 to 24, 48, verse 14. Which way? Jesus is the way. What way should we follow if we want to hear from God? Should we go and consult most senior prophets or go to the Holy Ghost conference? No, go to Christ. The sheep. Hear his voice. There is no special prayer to hearing the voice other than to become his sheep. Become God's servant, a sheep under his protection. And if God is the pastor of your life, you will hear his voice. But if he's not the pastor, you will not hear his voice. So the only way is through salvation in Christ. That's why Jesus said to you, he is the way. Any other way leads to robbery of your soul. Because most of us always think of robbery as when it's highway with God to take away your physical possession. That is part of it. But robbery of your life is more important than robbery of your possession. The devil 
can rob your destiny, rob your blessing, rob your life, rob your marriages, rob your children's futures, and wrestle with your blessing. All these are part of the ways of the thief. But his job is to steal, kill, and to destroy. But the only way to free yourself from the power and the grief of the enemy is to know the path of salvation. And that is through Christ Jesus. Because Jesus is actually the way. Not just the way. He is also the truth you have been seeking for all your life. The answer to your unanswered question is Christ himself. Do you want solution? Come to Christ. Do you want answer to questions that you do not even have a clear-cut answer for? Come to God. Jesus is the answer to all your hard questions and plans. He is the key to your destinations in life. And beyond that, he is your life. Just living or dying revolve around his presence. And that's why the Bible says, Thou shalt know the Lord thy God, for he is thy life. He is your life. Your life is not in emergency or tramodent hospital being built in your street. Your life is not in an incubator. Your life is not in some fancy cancer drugs. The Lord is your life. He says, follow me in John 14, verse 6. And look, verse, chapter 1, verse 79. Let's reach Luke, chapter 1, verse 79. Luke 1, verse 79. What does he say? He said, give me to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the ways of peace. So, that is the way. The way of peace. The way where there is no sorrow. The way where you can enjoy immunity from trials and trouble. The ways where you can relax in the midst of battle. That is the way the word of the Lord leads to. That's why it is essential for every believer, not some, every believer, to hear the word of God. Let's read Revelation 7, verse 17. Revelation 7, verse 17. Let's see what he has to say in Revelation 7, verse 17. It says, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, shall lead them into the living fountain of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So, are you still living in tears, sorrow, pains, affliction? God just promised here, that he will lead you to the fountain of the living water. And which you will drink and will never test again. And God also promised to remove tears from your eyes. That thing that make you don't want to sleep at night. That cause pains in your heart. That affliction that has stubbornly remained. God is saying that I should tell you today. That the reason why he is showing you the way. Is so that he the Lord will remove that tears from your eyes. And not only one tears, every tears from your eyes. Maybe you are confused. You don't know what to do with your children, your marriage. Or at 30 something, you are still single. The Lord is saying, He will remove tears from your eyes. Or you have been married. So many years, no fruit of the womb. But I want to give you good news. He is the way. And he says to me, there is no barren in the land. And that's what I believe. 
And as I have hold on to that belief since I became a minister to today, and everybody I have encounters, they never regretted it. Because there indeed was none barren among them. And none of them that God has used me to pray for ever cast their young. Because healing will remove every tears. The Lord will not bring tears to your eyes. He will remove the tears that is in your eyes. I know we are, we are told in the Orthodox Christianity that when you face affliction, endure it. But God tells me something different. He is not in the business of putting load upon people's head. But he is in the business of removing those loads. That's why this morning, whatever load the enemy puts on you, God is in the business of taking those loads away. And he's going to take it away from your family, from your marriage, from your children, from your destinies. The Lord is going to take those loads away. Gone are those days where you cannot sleep in the night because of oppression. The Bible says oppression makes a wise man foolish. What did Abraham's servant say in Genesis? Let's look at what Abraham's servant said about not having tears in Genesis. In the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 24, verse 27. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth, and being in the way. The Lord led me to the house of my master Bertrand. The Lord led me to the house of my master Bertrand. This is another way God speaks to us by directing our steps. Our step to victory. It's another part of speaking that God does with Christians. Sometimes God does not need to speak audibly. He simply leads you to the right place. Where you can get that thing you have been seeking for for years. And that is another way God speaks to us. Why we are, we are lost people, happy, lost people, in Psalm 107, verse 7. Let's read Psalm 107, verse 7. Psalm 107, verse 7. Psalm 107, verse 7 said, And he led them forth by the right way, and they might go to the city of inhabitation. God guide our steps. So the way to that call is not in any pastor. Jesus is the way. If you follow him, you will never miss the way. The Bible says, how can a man guide his way? How can a youth guide his path? It's by taking heed to that commandment. A man cannot guide his way. A youth cannot guide his path. It's only except the Lord leads the way. The only exception is if God is the leader of your way. Why we are the kings over joy? In Matthew chapter 2, verse 9. Matthew 2, verse 9. Let's see why the king will overjoy in the book of New, in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. It said, When, we, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, until it came and stood over where the young child was. 
the child they saw in the east. Let's read verse 12. From 11 to 12. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped. And they had opened their treasure. They presented unto him the gift of gold, frankincense, and mine. And 12. And they were warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They depart into their country another way. Here we heard of another way God speaks to us. Apart from directing our path, He speaks to us through dreams. Through dreams. God can speak to us through dreams. Dreams, let us not get confused. Dreams are two characters. There are dreams you have as a result of oppression. There are dreams you have as a result of satanic influence. There are dreams you have as a result of oversleep. But there are also dreams that are directed by God. And such dreams, you can distinguish them easily. Because the word dreams that come from God sticks. You will not have peace until you have the interpretation. That was why Daniel could fast to know what his dream says. Because that was the only means of communication by which God was communicating with Daniel through dreams. And that's what today people study in divinity. Now, who told Peter to go in Acts chapter 10 verse 9 to 12 to 19? An angel shined upon him in prison, Peter was locked between two guys. God sent his angels to set him loose from the wickedness of Herod. Who acted? Who said? Send in Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Let's look at who Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Acts chapter 13. In the book of Acts 13, verse 1 to 3. He said, And now when the church had was when the church now there were in the church that was at Antioch a certain prophet, teacher, Barnabas, Simeon, that was called Niger and Lucia of Caesarea, and Mane which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Paul, for the work we are unto, I have called them. Remember what we talked about in our previous lecture, that thus says the Lord God of hosts himself will not do anything. But the secret he will reveal to the servant that fear him. That is the reason why we don't see God speak to everybody at the same time. God believes in orderliness, in hierarchy, in the spirit. He would direct his path to speak to the prophet in the church. And the prophet will make it known to the people. And this prophet receive instruction from the Holy Spirit. They are different from the Old Testament prophets. The Old Testament prophet receive voices through enchantment, through being filled with the Spirit, and they receive an enchantment and they hear the voice directly. In the New Testament, it's different. We now have gift called the gift of prophecy. The Holy Spirit embodies us and allows us to prophesy things into people's life and those things come to pass. That is what we call the gift of prophecy. And that prophecy, we have people with this specific gift of the Spirit of prophecy. 
And these people, they are called prophets. And they are the people that can connect with the Holy Spirit and understand mystery. And God speak directly to them. And these prophets prophesied in the name of the Lord. I remember I was walking with my friend Jude. We moved. We were going on the path. After having prayed in a fellowship, I heard a voice directly. I will separate my two elects that my work will go unhindered. I didn't know what I said, but I heard Jude begin to cry. Are you saying God is going to separate the two of us? And I begin to wonder. Maybe that's not what God made. I said, I don't want to be separated from you. But that was the last day we have a fellowship together. God caught me away in the spirit. Now I'm in a different mission. He is on a different mission. And we have not been able to see each other for the past 20 something years. That is God's word in action. God's word does not need physical enforcement to come to pass. He enforces his word his own way. Who said that in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, 13 verse 1 to 3, the Holy Spirit, he is the spirit behind the spirit of prophecy. You cannot prophesy without the spirit of truth. And that's why the Bible said, no man speaketh of the Holy Spirit, said Jesus is a cost. And nobody on earth can say Jesus is Lord except the speaker of the Holy Spirit. Who is guiding Paul? In Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10. Let's go to Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10. He said, now when they had gone through Phagia, and the region of Galatia. And we are forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. After they were come to Marcia, they are sold to go into Bethania. But the Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by Marcia came down to Troas. Now they appear in appeared to Paul in a night vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, prayed him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Here we see God again speak through a vision. In verse 10, after he has seen the vision, he immediately we endeavor to go to Macedonia and surely gather that the Lord has called us to preach the gospel to them. First, the Holy Spirit denied them access to Asia. Why? Because the people were not yet ripe for the gospel. But we know the gospel penetrated Asia later. But at that point in time, they were not ripe. And God does not want his children to waste their time. And as a result, he denied them access to Asia. But he rather appointed them to a more fruitful ground of Macedonians in a night vision. So that is why God speaks to us. The purpose is to guide the path of the elect. That's why the Bible says the path of the just shine brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Who will speak to you and guide you even when in your daily problems he will also guide you so the bible says do not lean upon your own understanding in all your way acknowledge god before you do anything silent prayer to god is it at your office you are given a task before you do the task acknowledge god as supreme he will take over that task well, are you brought before a court for a case you don't even know how to defend yourself? The Bible says, acknowledge God. He will give you a man full of wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to say or even resist. Are you brought before a job interview and you don't even have 
grams of what the question is going to look like involve God, Holy Spirit. He will bring everything you have studied to your remembrance. He will take of Christ and expand it to you. Are you in innovation to invent a new thing? Acknowledge God. He will bring understanding to you. The Bible said, is there any one of us that lack wisdom? Let him ask. Let him ask in faith and not in wavering. So, is there anyone sick? The Bible says, is there anyone sick among you? Let him call for the elder of the church. The prayer of faith will save the sick. If he has committed any sin, his sins will be forgiven. Who will speak to you and guide you even in your daily problems? On the journey, many people think it's impossible in the mission. We hit a rock. We were far away from town, even from the nearest mechanic point inside the forest when our tire suddenly burst. Even the two passengers we give an assistant to, they begin to complain. And I said, God, I don't know what to do. The Lord said, you can't stop here. Continue to drive the car. I said, but the tire has just ruptured. He said, it doesn't matter. Continue. We managed that tire to turn until we reached mechanic station. And there was no damage whatsoever to the wheel. Because we listened to the voice of God. Christians should learn to listen to the voice of God at every instance of their life. What about in the night? We were moving and there was a lot of kidnapping in Nigeria within those periods. And we were going to a mission field. We heard they just kidnapped somebody in that road. And we were to pass the road by 1 a.m. in the night. Because the journey was not too smooth. And we look up to God. And the people said to me, let's look for where to sleep. I said, where are we going to sleep? In the middle of the forest? Let us go. And we continued to go. And the Lord stood with us. The road was as safe as it was in daytime. Even all the ritual points were passed by the driver without a single interference. That is to show you, when God is with you, he speaks to you. He guides you and strengthens you. He empowers you across satanic borders. Things that were impossible for man, they are possible with God. Who was that man? And what does he understand? I have come to a situation where I don't hear what the people are saying. We were to hold conference, and the village that decided to hold another conference against us from the beginning to the end of the night. Holding a meeting that nobody should attend that crusade because we came with a foreign god. And while we, they were holding meeting against us, the Holy Spirit did an uncommon miracle. And that of common miracle did wonders in our life. And we went straight to the power of God and did something that no man has ever done. God gave special miracle to be performed by our hands. All the village elders and their king left the meeting and they came to the fellowship. Why? Because we listened to the voice of God. Today, this is where we are going to cut this leadership training. I want you to have a better understanding of it. You can join this team by clicking on the link below. You can also donate to us. Your money will be appreciated for mission work. And you can fellowship with us. Or join us our next fellowship. Or join us every Sunday by 5 p.m. Where we use opportunity to learn from the word of God. And to hearken unto what the Spirit has to say. Or join us today, every Wednesday by 10, where we use opportunity to learn in our leadership training. Today, we take 40 to 30 minutes for leadership training. 
every Thursday morning. This helps you to prepare you for a leadership role in the nation. God bless you as you participate. If you miss any of this teaching, go to our website at cgf at cserves.com or you can go to our Facebook page. You have all the links there and you can also watch the past video. God bless you. I want to pray for you where we end this part one of this teaching. Father, I ask your people, I ask your people if they want to serve you. And they say yes. Lord, because they have said yes, oh Lord, say yes to everything that disturbs them and heal it. Grant them their heart desire. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you.